Medical schools did not care about my 343 hours of hospital volunteering. In all my medical school interviews, I talked about cleaning high touch areas, transferring phones to nursing stations, and delivering blood products to the basement exactly zero times. For me, hospital volunteering was generic, uninspiring, and just sucked. So if medical schools did not ask me about my hospital volunteering, what did they ask me about? My time coaching the Hoopers, a ragtag team of eight to 10 year olds who ended up winning the championship. Or my time helping patients lose weight, over 20 pounds in a 16 week program, and how we made those healthy habits stick. Or the $20,386.08 that I raised through grants and funding bodies to support Vietnamese Community Health an organization that puts on quarterly health fairs to help the underserved Vietnamese and Hispanic immigrants in Orange County, California. I'm just a normal guy who loves basketball, fitness, and cares a ton about the community around me. And I'm not someone who publishes papers on curing cancer or started a nonprofit to build homes for the homeless. And that's okay. Being true to myself, being world-class at the things that I care about, and ditching that checkbox mentality got me into my dream medical school at UCLA. And I absolutely want the same for you. Today, we'll focus on the four things that sucked about my medical school application so you can avoid making those exact same mistakes. Number one, I chased research that didn't matter. I joined a health services research lab where our main project was investigating polypharmacy in elderly patients. And to be clear, I joined because the job description had said that multiple publications were promised. And while I did publish three separate publications, not a single medical school interviewer had ever asked me about this opportunity. And the reason for that is what I call person to paper mismatch syndrome. The person in front of the interviewer does not at all seem like the paper application that that interviewer had read prior. On paper, when you read this extracurricular activity, you can tell that I am not passionate about what we're doing. It just seems so bland. And that's because it was for me, because I was really only involved in literature review and combing through the charts looking for numbers. I was never really involved with the people or the hypothesis or the paper. This hurt me a ton because when interviewers would ask about it, I wouldn't really have much to say. I didn't understand the project very well and it made me look pretty bad, especially because I had listed three publications that had come out of it. The takeaway here is to not chase publications just for publication's sake. I'd rather you join a lab that you're heavily involved with and never publish over two or three years than join a lab for three or four months, get a publication, and then have to speak passionately in it during an interview setting and know that you cannot. Number two, I founded and was the president of a club that sucked. All over the internet, you'll see examples of successful pre-meds who have founded and were the presidents of their own clubs. And so naturally, I felt like I should be doing the same. When we opened up this club, Brain Sport, I thought it would be cool to combine my interests of sport, neuroscience, and research. Brain Sport worked with the sports neurologist at UCLA to conduct concussion baseline testing. Essentially, we were looking at how athletes performed on memory and reaction time tests before and after a head injury. And while it sounded really cool and I had the grand title to go with it, not a single medical school cared. Again, they recognized that this club's impact over the last three years was so insignificant that it likely really didn't do much. And honestly, they were right. We had concussion baseline testing maybe once every two quarters, and every other quarter maybe we had a Panda Express fundraiser just so that all the club members could come out and chat. And in all actuality, being the president of a club like that makes you look worse as a pre-med because you're in charge of the ship and the ship isn't going anywhere. This was a huge mistake on my pre-med application, and if I were to do it all over again, I'd rather take no title and have a significant role in a club making a significant impact on a person, population, or problem than be the founder or president of a club that does absolutely nothing but Rubio's taco fundraisers. Number three, I became a hospital volunteer. Becoming a hospital volunteer is probably the most common clinical experience in America. Unfortunately, most often it's an extremely generic, mediocre, and uninspiring activity. It certainly was that way for me. And even worse, getting a hospital volunteering position nowadays is so competitive. And so if you get one, you feel like you should not leave because you work so hard to earn the spot in the first place. 
I mean, I honestly feel like hospital volunteering gaslights pre-meds sometimes into thinking that it's such a great experience, when most of the times, it's not. It's Saturday morning, 7 a.m. shifts where you're sitting at the desk doing nothing but checking family members in and delivering water to patient rooms. And while those things are important, they don't fully give you a representative understanding of what it is like to be in medicine as a physician, as a nurse, as a patient. These are the things that we're really trying to understand when it comes to clinical experiences. We wanna understand why certain patients can't get care or don't understand their care. And we want to get some exposure to some of the biggest problems in healthcare today. And while I can't speak for every single pre-med out there, I can say that for myself, hospital volunteering was so bad it almost made me quit medicine altogether. In addition, there's a seriously heavy opportunity cost. For me, hospital volunteering was 343 total hours long. That meant I couldn't have spent 150 hours on research, 150 hours more with my family, 150 hours with my community in Orange County. I chose to spend that time in the hospital and that meant I could not spend that time elsewhere. Number four, the largest mistake, I did not double down on what was working already. When I was a freshman and sophomore, I made sure to meet with advisors and upperclassmen early so I could get a good sense of whether I was on the right track. And every time someone looked at my application, they noticed the community work that I was doing with Vietnamese Community Health and the interest that I had with basketball and fitness, everything from refereeing intramural basketball to coaching youth basketball to helping patients lose weight. Those things were clearly working. They were helping me stand out and differentiating me from other pre-meds on campus. If I could do it again, I would spend more time doubling down on the things that I'm already extremely strong in. For example, with Vietnamese Community Health, could I have built a program that increased the percentage of patients who left our health fairs with insurance and attended their first primary care visit? I certainly believe I could have but it would have required saying no to the other things that I were okay or mediocre at, and yes to the things that I was already good at and doubling down on them. For our program where we are helping patients lose weight over a 16 week intervention, I was the director of health coaching responsible for finding and training our undergraduate health coaches so that they could help their patients lose weight. Could I have taken some of that time from hospital volunteering and invested it into listening to our coaches' phone calls taking notes and giving them personalized feedback so they could increase their effect on their patients. And wouldn't that have been awesome if that made a real difference where our average weight loss was eight pounds per 16 week program and having that additional training curriculum bumped it up to nine, 10, 11 pounds per patient? Could I have asked for a larger role, asking to be the director of basketball youth coaching at that park so that I could hire and train and find better youth advocates for our young athletes? If I had spent 343 hours on any of these projects instead of hospital volunteering, it would have deepened my themes. It would have made it very clear who medical schools were getting if they chose to accept me. They were going to get a proven community health advocate, youth mentor, and basketball super fan. And while my application had hints of that, I would have loved for it to scream those things, to make it undoubtedly clear as to what I was going to bring to their medical school. And I'm beyond grateful for UCLA Medical School to give me a chance to train there. And I want the same for you, to be accepted to your dream medical schools. And so while it's easy to nitpick my application after I've been accepted, I do want to emphasize that these details matter and these decisions can make a world of a difference. My roommate Ben had a 3.8 GPA and a 517 MCAT and earned zero acceptances. Making the same mistakes that Ben did or I did can actually stop you from ever becoming a doctor. For a full understanding of why Ben didn't get in, please watch this video. It'll connect the dots on what you just learned here and it'll give you five big mistakes that Ben made that you can also learn from. I'll see you over there.